So a couple of days ago was Disney's Investor Day live stream where they announced everything that they have planned for theaters and Disney Plus. So today I'm gonna to stop and rank all nine announced Star Wars TV shows for Disney Plus based off my excitement. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your ranking of the nine upcoming Star Wars TV shows based off of your excitement. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. One more thing before we get started, I have a companion video to this over on my Patreon page where I talked about some of the other Lucasfilm announcements from yesterday, a Patty Jenkins Star Wars film. Willow the TV show, a little bit of information on the Indy 5 project, as well as a couple more things that they announced. Join Patreon at any level and you can unlock that video and so much more. And let's get started. In last place, a droid story. They described it this way. The show will feature a new character that is guided by R2-D2 and C-3PO. Well, we already did this show back in the 80s and it was awesome. No weapon in my To me, R2-D2 and C-3PO are spice characters. You don't eat a spoonful of salt or pepper, you sprinkle them on the main course, and that's how I see these characters. They make the main characters a little bit more interesting by adding an extra dynamic, and they add a nice flavor to some specific scenes, but I don't want a spoonful of C-3PO. Him in particular, he can be kind of annoying. So this project, just at face value, really doesn't interest me and it feels like a cartoon from several decades ago. At number eight, Star Wars Visions. They described it this way, presenting all new creative takes on the galaxy far, far away. Star Wars Visions will be a series of animated short films celebrating Star Wars through the lenses of the world's best anime creators. Pretty simply put, I don't really like these sorts of projects. They did it back almost 20 years ago with The Matrix, it was called The Animatrix. I wasn't a big fan of it. Then they did it with The Dark Knight, it was called Gotham Knights. I wasn't really a fan of it. In general, I'm not a big anime fan. And also when they say short films, I'm pretty sure they mean 10 to 20 minutes. And for me, that's not enough to tell this contained story with new characters in a way that would kind of draw me in. Maybe if we find out that they're actually like 40 to 60 minutes, it could move up on this list. I might be more excited, but as is, this just isn't really my sort of thing. Next up, Lando. Described as everyone's favorite scoundrel, Lando Calarazine will return in a brand new event series for Disney+. Plus. Justin Simeon, creator of the critically acclaimed Dear White People and a huge Star Wars fan, is developing the story. Now, it's tough to imagine that they'll do an 80-plus year old Lando starring Billy D. Williams. That doesn't sound like a good time. There are two rules to remember if you want to have a good time. Rule number one, never run out of Colt 45. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So I'm assuming it's gonna be solo era with Donald Glover, but the interesting thing is during the announcement, they didn't say who the lead was going to be, which is very interesting to me. I'm assuming that this is gonna be another story set between episodes three and four, and I've said it many times before, and I'll say it more times in this video, I don't wanna keep going back to this exact same time period, often with the exact same characters, and this would be an example of that. I would be interested in like a Crimson Dawn storyline about the underworld where Lando and Han showed up, but I'm not crazy about the idea of just a Lando series where he's in the lead. Number six, The Bad Batch. Described as in the post-Clone Wars era, they will take on daring mercenary missions as they struggle to stay afloat and find new purpose. Now I know for a lot of you, this one is a top level show because you absolutely love the Clone Wars and this show very much is a continuation of characters established in that show and it has much of the creative team from the Clone Wars. For me, I've never been a massive fan of Clone Wars. There are story arcs I've enjoyed. I thought season seven was a nice send off that told some pretty cool stories, but in general, 
I'm not as bananas about it as many of you are. So that's why this one is a little bit lower for me. Once again, it's another series set between episode three and episode four. I'm a little bit interested in seeing those very early years with the transition from Republic to Empire. That's a little bit interesting to me. The trailer they gave us did show us Fennec. That's fun to see characters from Mandalorian showing up here. That interests me probably the most of anything in here. I know I'll watch it week to week with my son. It'll be a lot of fun, but it's not top tier excitement for me. In fifth place, Andor, here's what they had to say. A tense, nail-biting spy thriller created by Tony Gilroy. Now, this is an interesting one to me. I'm trying to imagine how this was proposed because one of the biggest complaints about Rogue One is that the characters were totally forgettable and bland. So in comes a producer. Here I am. And they decide, what if we made a TV show about one of those boring characters. Not a great plan. And once again, it's a series set between episode three and episode four. The thing that makes this one stand out to me though is Tony Gilroy. This is the screenwriter behind the original Born trilogy and they're describing it as a spy thriller. That to me, is what I'm trying to focus in on, not the character that they chose to be the lead, not so much the time period they chose, but a spy thriller in the world of Star Wars from the guy that gave us the original Born trilogy. That's interesting to me. Then we have Rangers of the New Republic, described as set within the timeline of The Mandalorian. This new live action series from executive producers John Favreau and Dave Filoni will intersect with the future stories and culminate into a climactic story event. Now, this is one I've actually been waiting for them to announce based off what they've been setting up in this season of The Mandalorian. Episode one, we're introduced to the Timothy Oliphant character who's called the Marshal. Second episode, these new, uh, new Republic officers appear. The officer comes back a couple episodes later to recruit Cara Dune. We come back an episode later, Cara Dune has been deputized. She is a marshal of the New Republic. So I kind of was thinking this is the direction that they were heading for one of these spinoffs, that it would be this police show set in the world of Star Wars on the Outer Rim, which Sounds awesome to me. Like I really enjoy Cara Dune, especially if they bring Timothy Oliphant in. I am all on board. In fact, this placement is largely based on the assumption the reason they cast Timothy Oliphant was because he's going to be a big part of this show. I could be totally wrong about that. Maybe this one will go further back on this list once we know the actual casting. But based off the picture in my mind, I, I man, I'm pumped for this show. Real quick before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking down below in the comment section. My list is not the right list. It's just my list, and I would love to see yours. Also, remember there's a companion video to this over on my Patreon page where I talk about the Patty Jenkins Project, Indy 5, Willow the TV series, plus a a couple more things that they talked about as well as they didn't talk about. And if you sign up for annual billing, you can get all the exclusives that I put out in 2021 on Patreon for just $21. If you're interested, check out the link down below in the description. In third place, Ahsoka. Naturally, when they make a TV series about a former Jedi that's still good, but a little bit jaded, I am intrigued and want to see more of that. This is a character that when it comes to Clone Wars is a top tier character, but she's only made this one appearance in live action and this is their chance to really tell some serious stories with her in live action that'll intersect with this world of Mandalorian stories that clearly they're trying to set up. So all of that sounds awesome, but even better, with where they left her character a couple weeks back, she's looking for Thrawn. So they were setting up what exactly the main plot line of her show will be, some sort of back and forth game with Thrawn. That sounds awesome. And if they'd announced their casting for Thrawn, this one might've moved up into one of those top two spots. Our 
runner-up, The Acolyte. The Acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take the audience into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and the emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. Now, this one may slip under the radar for a lot of people because it doesn't have a returning character to kind of spark the big headlines, but for me, this is Disney Star Wars living up to its potential. A Star Wars mystery thriller? No way. About the emerging dark side? Excellent. Said during the final days of the High Republic era? Kawabunga. On the one hand, we have very little information about this series, but everything that we do have sounds so interesting and fun to me. I want them to go to different time periods and tell different types of stories, and that's what this is. If you don't know, next month they're launching the High Republic book series where they're going several hundred years back so we can see this different time period through these books, and then they announced this series. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate what they've been doing with The Mandalorian and apparently with these shows is that they're respecting that the books exist and that Clone Wars and Rebels exist and bringing all the canon together. It's always been canon, but as soon as you bring it into the live action, there's just something that makes that a little bit more real and tangible. And as I keep saying, they're doing something new, different, and risky. But coming in at number one is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Speaking of new, different, and risky, this one is none of those things. This is a very safe bet. And it's yet another series set between episode three and episode four. But for me, this is my exception to my criticism that they keep telling stories in this time period. This is the one to me that's very interesting because Obi-Wan Kenobi is a top tier character for me. Ewan McGregor is still A-list actor showing up in big franchise stuff that, that are awesome, some of them. And he's aged enough that you can fill in that gap. What was going on with Obi-Wan Kenobi between Ewan McGregor and Alec Guinness? And now we get some of that story in there. And I can't wait to see what that's going to be. And then the big announcement that came for this yesterday, they finally confirmed Hayden Christensen will be returning as Darth Vader. We've had these rumors for five years now that he's returning. Nothing came of it. And this time, it's really happening. I don't know what that means. Is he going to be in the suit? Is it flashbacks? Is it something else? I don't know. And they talked about it as if, like, there's a duel. The language that they used during the presentation that Kathleen Kennedy, what she said, sounds like they will be clashing once again on screen, which feels like a tale that we really didn't know about based off of what Obi-Wan Kenobi said in A New Hope. All that sounds awesome to me. Like I said, I'm normally very skeptical about this time period and rehashing old characters. This is my exception. This is the one that I'm very interested in. So it comes in at number one. Remember, you can check out that companion video down below where I'll talk about the Kathleen Kennedy stuff, Willow, Indy 5, plus more. If you want more Star Wars content from me, check out that playlist right over there with a bunch of my rankings. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.